Uh, behind me is a part of the student art show for the 2018 fall semester. Uh, these are pieces by students from my painting and drawing classes. Well, each, each class has certain assignments that they have to do. So with those assignments, um, they have certain criteria for content as well. Uh, so the um, canvas pieces that you would see as you walk around the show are um, aligned with also the um, all graphite pieces too for the drawing class. And they're both the same assignment, which is a self-portrait. But it's a self-portrait without actually showing your face. Um, it's, it's kind of telling, tell me about yourself, what you're like, what do you want to do, things like that. Um, and then the, we have pen and ink, which are just kind of, what do you like to look at? Because that's the first one, so it's just kind of getting them off the ground. Getting them thinking about reference images, because that's important for when we create work. Um, if we don't have enough reference and we just make stuff up off our head, we forget a lot of things. And so one of the main things that I try and get with all my classes is slower looking. Slower, slower looking is important to get the aspect of the object or the person down instead of thinking of it off your, off your head or any sort of uh, memory because memory is faulty. <laughs> so if it's faulty then we don't have any sort of way to convey that this is X person because you know what the X person looks like but the, the other people probably don't, for example. Yeah, so um, the photography class is actually ran by Mike Granderpool. Him and I um, partner up for this thing, we partner for a lot of other things too. Um, and he is showing the, the students the technical side of things, but also in a way to make them look compositionally uh, attractive instead of, oh, hey, this is a hamburger. Oh, hey, this is a skateboard. But actually making it look like, okay, there's movement going on. There's, there's a, a depth of field. There's a, what was it, a third composition, third composition. So there's a lot of stuff going on there too. And I, I mean, these photographs are really nice uh, and they show that really well. So if anybody were to actually come to the show, it has a really nice uh, added feature. So um, it, it happened a few years ago uh, when Mike Vanderpool was an adjunct here. Uh, and I started trying to get with him about getting the photography students involved because it's a visual media, why not have that with the art classes? So me and him were talking back and forth, and um, he was all for it, and he helped me get the initial photographs in, and then from that we just kind of started actually talking about uh, other things, and since now he's become a full-time adjunct, or full-time faculty uh, with the design department, we have been able to collaborate on, he teaches them the elements of art and principles of design, and I teach my class there too. So same thing with Sherry Howard, um, she does art appreciation. So with art appreciation, I also try and get in touch with her to make sure I know what she's teaching so I can piggyback off that as well. So it's, it's collaboration, not just for us two, but I'm trying to collaborate with a lot of different people to make sure the students know it's not just, hey, this is a box and this is what your class is and that's not outside of the box, but it actually is. Everything bleeds into one another. These students are not art students. I, I, I realize that. So when I talk about success or craftsmanship or things like that, I, I look for any sort of um, issues that they've had and how they've overcome them, and decision making. Uh, also the amount of effort. We can have a student that's really, really good at what they do, but don't put a lot of effort in, then that's not telling me anything, because you're not trying to improve yourself. Um, and I have, I've had students who are newer to art and through their efforts have become better, just from, from practice. So a successful piece to me is just them getting through those decision-making processes and also obviously the effort and trying. Um, it's not necessarily, oh, this looks really, really good, so you get an A, and this doesn't look good, so you get an F, but it's really just me getting them to really, again, slow looking, really thinking about the process, thinking about where they're gonna put the stuff, decision-making at every aspect. Um, so novice artists in general, um, I would say to, again, just look around you. Uh, uh, the average person spends about 10 to 15 seconds in front of a piece of art. And that usually if, is if it's, they stop. <laughs> um, then if it's really good, about 30 seconds. So you don't get a lot of the nuance of the piece when you're just standing there looking at it for 30 seconds and walking away. So slower looking does help. Not just for art, like looking at art, but making art too. If you slow down, it helps. If you break things down in bite-sized chunks. 
Um, so I tell my students, start with the basic shapes. They hate me because it's always about shapes. So start with the basic shapes, work your way down to the details that way. Um, and practice. That's Everything is practice. So I tell my students that um, they can get uh, they can get as good as me or better from just practicing. Because that's all I've had to do throughout school, because I went to uh, art school and that's all they had us do. <laughs> Where just we had to run laps pretty much, which was just do drawings, do drawings, do paintings, do um, ink uh, drawings, do studies, do sketches. So it was a lot of rigorous uh, practice because that's important. The art show will be up until December 10th. That is the last day of my classes, um, and then my students will take it down. But it is in the second floor A building um, in the atrium, or just off the atrium. Um, so if they come just off the atrium on the second floor into the A, into A building, they'll see the show there. Um, and then they can also look at the photographs by uh, my Grand Pole's glasses there.